the number one mistake to create a data module disaster in your Cognos environment, and how to avoid it today on Super Data Brothers. All right, so let's just jump right in. Um, so what is this huge mistake? Well, it comes down to understanding the crucial difference between a label and an identifier in data modules. Every object in data modules has a label and an identifier. Uh, for example, here I'm looking at the retailer type table, and you can see over here uh, in the properties, right up top, the very first thing you see is label, and then below that, if you expand advanced, you'll see identifier. Now, what's the difference between these? The label is what something is called in the Cognos user interface. So if it's in our visualization or a report, whatever's in the label field is gonna be what appears, in this case, retailer type. The identifier is what an object is actually called under the hood in Cognos, when Cognos is doing calculations or generating SQL or something like that. Crucial to understand the difference, is the difference between these two. Changing the label, you can do at any time. You wanna change what a table looks like in a, in a, a visualization or change the name of a field, it'll automatically flow through to every object that references that field. The identifier, however, if you change this, anything that references that field is gonna break or anything that references that table is gonna break. So it's super important that you figure this out ahead of time before you start building content in uh, based off of this data module. Like you can actually see this in action if I look at the retailer type table and then you go to show query information. Here you can see the SQL and it's referred to in the SQL as page underscore 10. Now, this is a problem because when you're writing calcs or SQL, you're gonna have to remember page underscore 10 instead of retailer type. So you're gonna wanna change it. The two most common situations where I find that this happens is first of all, when you import a new table into Cognos, you're going to, it's gonna pull that information at that time, create an identifier, and it might not be what you want, especially if you're creating a, a table off of Excel. Like you can see here, in the Great Outdoors data module that ships with the samples, you can see here that the identifier for the retailer type table is page underscore 10. That's because it comes from an unnamed tab in an Excel workbook, and so it just gives it that name. It is not very helpful. So it's simple enough to just go ahead and change it here. All right, so let's just call this um, retailer underscore type. Beautiful, we're good to go. The second time that this is gonna occur is when you're building a new calc. So if I come in here, and I go to the sales table, and let's just say I want to create a revenue variance calculation, so revenue uh, versus planned revenue. I can control click the two of them, choose create calculation, and it's super important that you rename it at this time. Whether you're building a calc or creating a, a field using any of the features in data modules, you have to rename it right here. It will take whatever name is here and use that as both the label and the identifier. So let's see what happens if I don't rename this, okay? Revenue minus plan revenue looks great, and I do this all the time. I say okay, and then I go and I actually look at my field and I go, oh, you know what, I wanted this to be called revenue variance, and the name it gave it was that default name, revenue minus plan revenue, that's not good. So you go up here and you change the label and you forget to change the identifier. So I call this revenue variance, seems great. It's called revenue variance in, in anywhere I see it in the user interface, but under the hood, what is this called? Well, it's called revenue underscore planned underscore revenue. Not a friendly name for developers. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you change this before you save this data module and build anything off of it. Now, what happens if you forget to do that? Let me show you. Um, I'll go ahead and save this. And then let's look in the content and uh, just to give you an example here, if I go into the content and we look in, I created a, a bunch of dashboards that reference this data module. And if I go to look at one of them, you're gonna see that I get some data set items used in this visualization are unavailable. Why do I see that? Well, let's go into edit mode. And the reason I see that is because retailer type, it can no longer find because it's looking for something that is page underscore 10 dot retailer type. And I changed the name of the table to retailer type. That address, it's, it's like, a, like sending a, a, you know, um, a mail to the wrong address. It cannot find that field because I changed that. 
Now, I created 10 dashboards off of this. All 10 of them are now broken. If I had 1,000, all 1,000 would be broken. And this creates the data module disaster in your environment that you wanna avoid. So the number one takeaway from this, it is crucial before you start building objects off of a data module that you make sure that the identifiers for all of your tables and fields and calculations and everything are meaningful and something that you can live with going forward. Because once you have a lot of content built off of one of these things, you're gonna be living with it. Hope that was a useful tip. We'll see you next time on Super Data Brothers.